Hey guys, it's Louise here and welcome back to my channel. So today I am bringing you a updated video of the Star Wars Outlaws accessibility. So thank you Ubisoft for gifting me this game early so that I can get this video ready to show you guys in anticipation for the game's release. I would like to let you guys know just before we get into this that I now have a Ubisoft creators code which means any purchase you make including Star Wars Outlaws if you use my code at checkout you will be helping to support me as a creator. So I'm going to be taking you through all the accessibility settings. I'm going to show you what I'm going to be personally using and show you what all they have added into this game. I've had a quick look through it already and it's all pretty impressive, honestly. So let's let's go. So when you click on the accessibility presets, you have your options for gameplay, cognitive, colors, vision and hearing. So let's have a look at gameplay. So here I've already actually changed my settings, so it's already going to show my choices. So here you have your gameplay experience. You have Explorer, Adventurer, Outlaw, Scoundrel and Custom. So of course this is the game difficulty and you have the option to customize it in any way you like. So let me show you these. So you have player health. You can set it from story to regular to challenging to hard with enemy difficulty wanted difficulty lock picking difficulty which i have put down to easy immediately slicing attempts you get your attempts that you get default or you get more and then galactic street food difficulty which is a mini game apparently i do not remember this i don't think i saw this so i've not i'm not sure what entirely this is but you've got a simplified and a default version um so i have got mine set to more slicing attempts easier difficulties um i'm keeping my enemy difficulty and wanted level um on regular for now just to see how it goes i'm gonna keep player health regular as well um and just kind of if i need to change it then i can change it midway through the game then we move on to mutter presets where again you can have it off on or custom and i of course have it on custom so Auto perfect cooling automatically cools the blaster perfectly so you can focus on other things. When you are cooling your blaster, it's the same as, for example, Battlefront 2, where you know you're you have a cooldown and you have to press the button in a specific time frame to get the cooldown, otherwise your gun will take longer to be usable again. Um so I have got that turned on because I always struggle to remember to do that, and I'm always really bad with timing. So I've got that turned on. You've got your NYX prompts, I think was automatically turned on. Um, always sprint, I've got that turned off because sometimes I like to just walk around the world and stuff like that and I don't really mind holding down the stick to sprint. Um, change hold actions to press, I have turned that on because I find it so much easier just pressing a button than holding. Shooting is on hold, Kessel's back cheat minigame uh, was automatically on, we'll see how that plays out. Fast talk is on, once unlocked, enable or disable K's fast talk ability, which we will discover what that is very soon. Lock picking difficulty, again, these are all, um, you know, the some of the settings you'll find across multiple different windows, which is really helpful so you're not stuck trying to find them in one specific place. Adaptive triggers intensity as well is also an option, so you can have it strong, weak or off. I'll um, just keep mine on strong because I don't mind it. Camera presets, you have custom as well. Oops, wrong button. Custom, so you have screen shake intensity, which I'm actually going to turn quite a bit down. Motion blur intensity, I'm going to turn off. Camera motion blur intensity, I'm also going to turn off. I cannot deal with motion blur. And I know a lot of people are similar. Some people like it, some people don't. So I'm going to have mine off completely. You've got chromatic aberration and you've got center dot, which I have turned on because I feel like it helps with finding where I am and understanding where the middle of the screen is and it kind of also helps with motion sickness as well so I have mine turned on. Next we head into cognitive accessibility so when we go to custom you have for the, the back card header you can either have in stylized numerals or you can have it in simple numerals so it's easier to read or you can have it as symbols as well. I'm going to keep mine on stylized because I think it looks cool. You can have Sabak helper logs, so whether events in Kessel Sabak trigger additional log lines. Uh, you've got the cheat minigame, whether Sabak cheat minigames require inputs or autocomplete. Lock picking difficulty again. Lock picking visual cues, which I have turned on because in my previous video, if you saw me talking about the actual gameplay, I have mentioned that lock picking for me personally is a bit of a struggle due to not being very good at rhythm style games and 
My hand-eye coordination is not very good either, so having visual cues I'm hoping will help. I have not tested this myself, but we'll see how it goes. Slicing attempts, again, you get more slicing numbered buttons, so you can either have them as the symbols, which is the standard, or you can have them as numbers, which, you know, is very helpful, because a lot of the symbols do look very similar. So again, these are all ones that we've already seen before, and then you've got the HUD visibility, HUD icon size, HUD background, which changes the HUD, which looks really, it looks really cool. Um, HUD icon size, so you can see the, the size change in there. Uh, honestly, I'm going to keep it on 120 because I think that's nice. Uh, HUD visibility is minimal HUD or full HUD or just contextual HUD. I think I'm going to go for full HUD, honestly. Could change it as we go, but we'll see. Uh, markers, whether objective and activity markers should display in the world as opposed to remain on the compass. So you can have them either just display in the world or you can have them on the compass. I'm going to keep it always. Always will keep markers showing in the world at all times. The markers, or sorry, for ping, the markers will display in the world when you expand the objective tracker with up on the D-pad. Uh, you have sound subtitles, so when you turn that on, obviously, it will give you subtitles above character speech that will tell you what the sound is that's around you. I'm going to keep that off for now. Um, you've got background color on the, uh, on the subtitles. You have focus mode, whether to play all sounds or to hide the less important sounds to let you focus on the ones that are critical. So that can be very helpful. For example, in Baldur's Gate, I find it really, really difficult to focus because in Act 3 specifically, there was so many things happening, so many noises, so many people talking. That was really, really difficult for me. So having a focus mode, I feel like is going to be extremely helpful for Specifically for days when my, you know, my sensory overload is a little bit too high and I need, I need just a little bit more quiet around me. We have audio descriptions, uh, we have high contrast mode, dynamic range, so between the loud loudest and quietest sounds. And you have control reminders, whether control reminders are displayed on the side of the screen. You can have them default, always on or always off. Um... And then if we go into colors, we have our colorblind presets. You have default. I'm not going to try and pronounce these words because they're a lot. I, I don't know how to pronounce these. I'm going to be honest. But you have the different options for colorblindness. And then you have the custom. So uh, you can just set the colors to whatever you like. If you if you have a preferred color, you can change that. Um, I have got mine set to a light purple just because I wanted to test it out. And I think it looks cool. Um, you can change text color, speaker name color, and dialogue text color. Um, then when you head into vision, we have, again, high contrast mode, audio description, menu narration. Um, you have interface text size, so even like for the menus, you can change the text size. Increased contrast colors, so you can see that changed the color very slightly, which I may actually keep on, I'm not entirely sure skipping past some that we've already seen again it's helpful that some options are in multiple menu screens so that you don't have to constantly go looking for them it's so much help more helpful um and then we have hearing when we go into this we have sound subtitles background speech subtitles and lock picking visual cues again we've seen some of these settings before already so, of course, that was from the accessibility presets view. And then you have all your settings here again as normal. So you've just got it in, you know, your standard menu form, um, which has more options in here as well. So you have explorer mode, remove the guiding color on core navigational elements in the world for a more immersive experience. So obviously, if you have this on, then you will not get as many visual cues and again, color guides to tell you where to go. A lot of people don't really like the whole yellow paint idea. It's obviously going to be very helpful for a lot of people, but you can turn that on or off if you prefer. You have view angle to change the FOV when not aiming to see more or less of the world. View angle when aiming, the same thing. And then here you actually have the option to turn the lock picking challenge off. So in the accessibility settings, you could change whether it was easy or difficult. But in here, you can actually just completely turn it off. So I will test out the visual cues myself. And then if I still struggle with it, then I'll just turn it off. Again, you can also turn off the slicing puzzle. So you don't have to do any of these. I'm not sure what it will replace it with. 
I assume maybe it'll just let you open things immediately. So then we find our space difficulty. So we have collision damage prevention, which I might turn on for now. Ion stun prevention, auto throttle in pursuit mode. So these are going to be very helpful for flying through space in the trailblazer. And then, of course, you have all of your standard control settings where you've got aim assist, toggle sprint, uh, inversions, and that kind of thing. I'm going to leave all of that as it is for now. Um, advanced controls, you have aiming sensitivity, hip fire sensitivity, look sensitivity, speeder control sensitivity, which, again, those are going to be things that I will adjust myself as the game goes so that I can figure it out as I play. You can also align the camera with horizon. So while controlling K, automatically remove the camera to face the horizon so you're no longer looking up or down if you haven't moved the camera yourself for a few seconds. That's going to be very helpful. Um, and then you can also do it with align with moving direction so the camera moves to look the direction that K is moving in. You have your controller options as well for your stick dead zones. And you have motion sensor functions, which lets you control aim by using dual sense controller. Uh, you have vibration intensity for all different options, honestly. You can change the vibration for all of these different things like mini games. Speeder, Nyx, World Elements, Menus, Environment, which is honestly pretty cool. Again, I personally won't be changing the, vib the vibration, but I know that will definitely help for some people. I mean, all of these settings are going to help someone out there. They have really, really put their all into these settings. Like, there's so many more than I expected. And then you have your Starship controls, like aim assist, control sensitivity, pursuit mode. Allows your Starship to follow a target enemy automatically, which will definitely come in handy as well. Speed boost is either toggle or hold. Shooting is hold or toggle as well. Starship Horizon auto align. And here we have the controller layout. So you can pause the video if you'd like to see this for yourself. We have on foot. We have speeder. And we have starship. Um, and we have different options. So you have left-handed southpaw, left-handed southpaw, alternate. You know, you can switch between all the different styles for each of the options too i'm gonna keep them on default for now may change in the future who knows display and graphics so one thing that i did see that i find very interesting is cinematic display mode so you can either have it to fill your screen or you can have it in this cinematic display mode where you've got like as you can see like the borders and stuff at the top um the 21 to 9 ratio, which honestly, I kind of like the full screen. Like, I, I think it's more immersive when you have it full screen. I know that the game is made, you know, games games and TV shows and everything now all have their cinematic display mode. And it helps for bigger monitors and stuff as well. I personally might use full screen for now. I'm just going to keep it on the cinematic as we go through this. But... I'm really glad that that's an option, honestly. I think that's really, really cool. We have screen calibration where you can calibrate all your... Uh, you can change your brightness, HDR mode, all that kind of stuff. High contrast mode again, cinematic display, quality. You have motion blur intensity, film grain. Yeah, we've, we've sort of seen all those before. Um, user interface, again, all your fonts, your colors. Oh, there's also a center dot size. Oh, that's actually really helpful. So you can change it to be a lot bigger or you can change it to be a lot smaller. That's actually really helpful. I did not expect there to be a size for the center dot, but I like that. I like that, honestly. I might keep it on 100 for now, but the options give you quite a range, which is really helpful for low vision. Uh, we have Nyx quick action. So it can either be an icon or a dot or hidden completely, which feels very immersive. I think I'm going to keep the icon on because I will also probably miss that dot. Um, and I feel like hidden, I will just get way too confused. So I'm going to keep the icon on, but that's cool for a more immersive experience. You can change the distance unit. Um, threat sense, show or hide threat senses for nearby enemies. So that gives you the slight white glow on the screen when an enemy senses you. Enemy state icons, so you can have it either off or on to show that the enemies are aware of K. Gosh, you can really make this game so immersive and difficult for yourself, can't you? I personally won't be doing any of that. But again, if you if you want that kind of that feel for the game, then these options will be for you. Language and subtitles. So we have voice languages. We have 
English, French, German, Spanish, Brazilian, Portuguese. User interface language, we have English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Polish, Russian, and Portuguese, Brazilian. So there's quite a few options in here, but it does say that it does not apply for text-to-speech. So the language is used for the spoken voices only. And then again, these are all your subtitles options, which we have sort of been through. So it has like the text size, background color, etc, etc. I will probably actually turn the subtitle size up a little bit so that it's easier to read. Oh, it already is up full. Okay, so the, you can either have it on small or medium. Medium isn't too bad, honestly. I would have preferred if it was slightly bigger. But again, all we can see right now is a very tiny screen. So it might be fine once I actually load up the game. And then your audio settings again. I currently have the music volume down just so it was easier to concentrate on making the video. But as always, you've got your master slider and then you've got your sliders for every other option. For controller, speakers, cinematics, volume, voice volume, hit feedback volume, sound effects, and music. You also have music frequency, how often music will play while exploring the world. I will definitely keep that on default. I love having music on in the background of video games, especially when it's Star Wars, because the Star Wars music is incredible. And as, you, as you'll figure out through this game, the music that has been recorded for this is incredible. It's all so nice, and it's going to be very addictive. It's going to be on my playlists immediately. Like, the menu screen, the the music on that. Oh, boy. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so good. So, yeah, those are the settings along with accessibility presets. They have done a really, really good job with this. I hope I have gone through as many as I possibly could with this. I hope I didn't skip over anything. But the game will be out very soon for you guys to check out for yourself. And you'll be able to change all of these settings as well in your own game. And I hope that as many people as possible can play. That was the aim of the game, was to allow as many people as possible to be able to play the game in a way that suits them, suits their play style, that suits their accessibility needs. And I really, really am very thankful for that personally because, again, as you saw, I use some of these settings. I know a lot of people will use way more of these settings than I do. Some people may not use any, but to have them there, it's always so helpful. And it's really nice to see that games companies are growing and expanding on their accessibility. So thank you to everyone who was involved in these awesome settings. And I hope I have maybe helped some people out there decide whether to get this game or not due to them being able to play the game with all of these different settings. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will be streaming this game on my Twitch channel. All the VODs will also be uploaded to my second YouTube channel, which you'll find linked on my profile. Um, and yeah, I'm so, so hyped for this. I hope you guys are too. And I will see you guys in on Twitch, I guess, for, for my Outlaws stream. So peace and may the force be with you.